Snoo Drama was kind of the beginning of the creative arts here on campus. Like, uh, when I first came here, there was no music program yet. There really wasn't uh, an improv group here, uh, sort of like we have now. It was, it was kind of the bare bones of the campus, and it offers the campus a creative side that I think isn't normally here. When I'm casting, I tend to look for people who really could fit the character. When, after I read through, I kind of have an idea of what the personality traits I'm, I want in a character, and I'm looking for someone who can genuinely be that person and not just simply act it out, because there's a real difference between acting a person and being a character, and I think the people that can actually be the character are the ones that are worth giving a shot. I try to show very human reactions. Um, I was told by a director in high school that acting is 90% uh, reacting and 10% acting. So a lot of it is just pretending you are that person and being in that situation and just reacting with your face and with the inflection of your voice like you would anything. You know, if someone surprised me when I didn't expect them, you, you show it with your eyes and your face and you know, you, maybe your voice goes up a bit. So I try to show very human reactions that people can identify with so they're like, that, that feels real to me. That's, that's good. Don't rush. Just, just find me somewhere to sit down. Oh, okay. It's okay. Just sit down. Sorry. It's, it's the gas. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I really, on, on stage, I really try to connect with my character and connect with the audience. Um, in, in Harvey, for example, that, that sort of meant breaking the fourth wall just a little bit you know, making eye contact with a lot of the people. Um, for instance, there's a scene where I put a portrait of myself and Harvey on the mantelpiece, and I, I like to throw it up there and just sort of like, you know, brush a, like a speck off of the painting and then look out and into the audience and see, you know, what do you guys think of this, you know, and then... To make a good actor or actress, you have to be willing to let yourself be made a fool of. And you have to be able to take criticism, because a lot of the people that I've worked with, they're amazing, and they go off on natural talent, and they can, they can be anyone they want, but they still need those tweaks every once in a while. So being open to suggestion and really allowing yourself to kind of let go of who you are and allow yourself to become someone else, I think that's what really makes a good actor or actress. Wilson. I'm going to for you on that. And that line where you're like, who in the encyclopedia wants to know? Like, you ever see, like, Looney Tunes cartoons where it's, like, the big, brawny, like, monster guy where he's like, who in the encyclopedia wants to know? Like, you're ready to fight. And you're like, yeah, you just turn on the spot so I can see. Like, like, who wants to know? Okay. To make a play successful, there's, it depends, I think, on the play. Um, especially, I mean, the past plays that we've done, a lot of them have been comedies. So really engaging with the audience and really connecting with them, I think, will make a play a lot more enjoyable for everybody. If you're just going out and saying your lines, you're not really connecting with people, then it's going to be boring for them. You're going to get a little bit more nervous as an actor, but once you hear that first kind of burst of laughter from the audience, I think it really kind of loosens you up and you're just like, okay, I can do this. And mm -hmm. it just, it makes the process a lot more enjoyable for everybody. You and Miss Kelly here? This afternoon, you say? <laughs> we do hope you understand, Mr. Dowd. It's a combination of things. It's um, commitment on the actors, because you can see in an actor's face if they're committed to being in that scene and if they're, if they're involved and care about the show. Because if someone's just phone booking their lines, you can tell they don't really want to be there. They're not having fun with it. You know, even the smallest character. You know, I was told by a director, you know, you there are no small parts, just small actors, and that's absolutely true. Because I, you can walk away from a play, remembering a character who had about five lines because you thought that was funny or that, that you know, spoke to me in some way. Um, so that makes a play successful. Along with, you know, uh, everyone caring for the betterment of the show. You know, from the way the scenes look to the, the care the, you know, stage manager takes in, like, picking out scenes and props, you know, just how meticulous details are. Because in the details is all that makes a show. The director, stage manager, all the actors and such, they, they need to be really focused on the end goal. Um, if, if there is no clear goal, it's, it's hard to, I guess, decide what you need to do. 
to get to that point. To prevent a play from reaching its full potential, it's people not interacting well with each other. There's not a lot of chemistry. Um, you can tell when people are being fake, and you can tell when people are just saying their lines. And when you are trying to portray your character and the person is simply just reading lines, it's, it's kind of hard to interact with that. And I think that losing that connection with the people you're acting with, or even if you're simply doing a monologue and you're losing the connection with the audience, it's just, it, it, does, it doesn't work and everyone kind of gets a little confused and that's when you start hearing the shifting in the seats in the audience and you realize that maybe you need to pick it up a little. My biggest fear, that's it's probably two, it's uh, either uh, not knowing my lines and just having to, or, or someone on stage forgetting a line, one of us forgetting a line and having to just make something up when none of us know what to do. Why? Right, I'm losing where you are because you're jumping around from page to page. Um, or it's, um, a crowd that's just not feeling it and it's just completely dead quiet and that's just painful and terrifying because you're prepared for laughs and there's nothing there and you kind of you almost wait for it and if it doesn't happen it's like an immediate letdown and that just kind of like it's like you're doing something wrong I mean you probably are but uh, yeah. my biggest fear as an actor I would have to say would be to be thrown on stage where literally nobody knows their lines <laughs> that's you. That's strange. I don't know if she was hysterical. That's strange. Oh, I see. That's strange. Yeah. Yes. That was me. <laughs> he said it was someone he came out here with this afternoon. Well, that's odd. <laughs> I did, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Alright. Well, that's the only reason I asked. Do you want to, like, give us all those books? We should get them. Also, remember, these flats have been here since before my time. I told you. I mean, that corner's probably good, but this one's not. Why? Um, I can... Bobby, do you still have the keys to the trailer? Know. Yeah. Do you want to go and check and see if you can find some nails so you can bring some Hell Week nails? is known throughout all theater. Everybody does it. It's the week before the show and the week leading up to the show in which everybody is at rehearsal. Your full costumes. It's really crunch time. I mean, there's very little messing around when it comes to Hell Week. You read your script, you come, you're prepared, you're showing what you have because it's the final countdown. You're, you're about to get started. Um, it's usually the time when I lose my temper a little bit more. I try not to because I know it's stressful for the actors too, but I we try to keep it a little bit fun, but at the same time, we're running rehearsals from, I mean, we were in Mocker a couple nights ago from 5 until about 12, 30, 1 o'clock running the show, and I know I was a bear. Everybody was a bear by the end of the night. We all just wanted to go home, and then the next day after classes, we had to come back and do it again. Um, Hell Week has always been an awful time, even from high school when we used to do plays. Uh, it's never changed. It is, is the week before your production, and nine times out of ten, there's a lot of stuff you just have overlooked or have forgotten about or just wasn't, isn't where it should be for the production, and that entire week is just you going through with that. It's finding the right costume. It's going through a scene and being like, oh my god, we're supposed to have an envelope in this scene. How have we forgotten that? So it's that, and it's, it's making sure everything is perfect, and you're there you're usually rehearsing for hours. I know during this last play, Harvey, we would get here at 11 a.m. in the morning, and we'd work on stage construction stuff, and we'd run lines, and we'd paint, and we'd build things, and we'd run sound cues, and then get in our costumes, and then rehearse. And we would get out around midnight. So I'd come here around 11 in the morning, 10 in the morning, and leave at, you know, 12 at night, and I'd see the sun for maybe a few hours of the day. And uh, that gets to be very depressing after a while. But um, you're looking towards something greater than, you know, your own personal feelings, which makes it worth it in the end. Alright, right, you're coming from a part of the house because you're wandering in. Andrew, you're coming in from the outside of the house, but you're wandering... Yeah, you're coming from the outside of the house. When you are leaving to go to the garage, you are going out that way. I'm going to die. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
By the end of Hell Week, we expect to know exactly what we need to do for opening night and subsequent shows. Everyone in this scene needs to go over their lines again. Well, I thought I thought that worked okay. It I worked mean, out. You obviously, guys... don't skip it if possible. Right, and don't. Who stop. wants to know? Right. But... Who wants to know? We're not going to bottle. Well, no. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New Drama Club's presentation of Harvey. Mrs. Simmons has guests this afternoon. She's my mother. Why? Who wants her? Oh, um, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, just, just a, a minute. Um, mother, mother, mother. Yes, dear. Telephone. Oh, no, dear. We did Harvey, and Harvey is probably one of the more fun shows that we've done here. Um, when I was looking to cast Elwood, I was looking for someone who's very genuine, very, very um, honest and polite, and immediately a couple people came to mind. But when I picked Andrew, after he had auditioned, he just, he nailed it. Everything that I had asked him to do, he just hit it on the head, and I think the casting for the show was probably one of the easiest things that we did because everyone that came in, they knew exactly what they wanted. They fit the personality so well. And I just, casting was incredible. And I loved the set. Um, it was a very personal set. We, we just went out and we said, all right, this is what we need to do. There's not many big set pieces, which was a big relief for us. It's Connor and I. and the actors who are moving the stage around. So it was nice to have kind of a small, more intimate set than the large ones that we've put on in the past. Um, I, I just, I loved the lines every time. I would anticipate the line coming and just put a little smile on my face. Mr. Toad. Good evening, my dear. These are for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, Dr. Chumley go upstairs? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, doctor, may I get my diagnosis? Yes, do by all means. In my opinion, Mr. Elwood P. Dowd is suffering from third degree hallucination, and the uh, other party involved is suffering from auto suggestion. I recommend shock formula number 977 for Elwood and uh, bed rest at home for uh, you know who. You do? I do. That's my diagnosis, doctor. I think that's what really made it a lot better. It wasn't as serious as our last production, but it wasn't as silly as a production before. It was just a genuinely just happy play, and I think that's that's what made it so so much fun to do. I found a buyer for the house. What? Listen, Mother, no matter what happened to you out there, we've, we've still got to find Uncle Owen and lock him up. Now, let me get some notes on this. You say you spoke with these two doctors, Dr. Chumley and what was the other one's name? I think it's a good decision to join Drama Club because it's definitely a lot of fun to, to get on stage. We're a great group of people. Um, this past show, I've, I've seen so much hard work go into it. Everybody is just super friendly, super enthusiastic about what they do. And it's just a great experience to, to put on a show for people, to make people laugh especially. It's one of my favorite things. Aside from the chance to meet new people and get involved on campus, which is why you join any club, um, you know, we offer a special kind of like, almost family kind of bond that I think most clubs don't. You know, when, we, um, when we're hanging out together or we're, we're among people who aren't in drama club, we'll say, uh, no, I can't hang out tonight, I've got drama. And we say the word drama almost like, like, not just a location, but, 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 a, but a thing we're about to go experience. Because it's, uh, you know, we're all together, we're working on something together. It gets stressful, but it's, uh, it's almost like a family dynamic. I love when people ask me why people should join Drama Club. We are the craziest bunch of people you'll ever meet. We have so much fun with everything we do. We are just, we are all actors, we're a group of actors, and we just, we just have so much fun all the time. We're a family. This is the closest 
thing that I've ever had to like a blood relative family since I've gotten here and we're there for each other you know if if you see one of us by yourself we're walking to go meet up with the rest of us and if you really want a family oriented club if you want to feel like you're really a part of something then you'll join drama club because every person makes a difference